All right, round table. Um, as I was saying in yesterday's session, my uh, ankle is uh, really, really swollen. I, I happen to be on some pain medication, so I apologize if, if the video goes astray a little. Uh, so while I may be entertaining, not sure exactly how productive. Uh, we were talking about crude oil yesterday. Um, for some reason, the volume is not showing up. There's about 204,000 contracts that have been traded today, uh, so a bit less than the, the past three days. That together with this big down day, remember um, what, what we conclude when we see a big down day, low volume, uh, we're not seeing the sellers come into this market this test, while I would like this to have been a small range day, is looking like it's panning out. We still need to wait, though, uh, to see what the future holds for this particular pair, uh, pair this particular <laughs> contract. Uh, JJG here, uh, again, volume is not really showing up. We've got about 65,000 shares that have been traded. Um, oh, no, it is showing up. There we go. Uh, so 65,000 shares traded. You can see volume is decreasing. We are not getting the the down uh, the the uh, lower close on the day, although we still have a few hours uh, in the New York session. Um, so again, not seeing a big sign of selling over here. Uh, remember, the JJG is uh, something that that we're using as a proxy for both our wheat trades and our corn trades. Both wheat and corn are looking like they're wanting to break out corn as we talked about yesterday, did break out of its box. Here is the uh, resistance line. Support is a little bit uh, off of the screen at the moment. Price popped up, came back down uh, to retest, and now looks like it's uh, getting ready to bounce back to the upside. Remember, we are in the whole planting uh, you know, cycle for corn. Nowhere near uh, soon enough to tell how the, the crop is actually gonna come in but we're at the beginning of the stage where there is a bit of information in the fields uh, so we can get some data. Remember, uh, we're going to be uh, focusing on uh, wheat come uh, July and then soybean, uh, July 9th or so, and then soybeans uh, around the 17th. Now, we also talked about uh, both the pound and the euro. Uh, remember, on, on both the pound and the euro, we had set up uh, for excuse me for the rather the euro we had set up for both buyer and seller. So let me get over to that right now. Whoops. Hopefully that'll. Hello. Okay, it is loading. All right, I just wanted to pause while we waited for the chart to load. Okay, so if you recall yesterday, the market had uh, pushed to the downside. The trading plan that we built was waiting for the market to close somewhere below uh, 2450, and then the retest. You got the retest uh, early in the session. Actually, it might be a little bit outside. So 8 o'clock a.m. Eastern time is when the retest came. So push down. We looked at this yesterday. There's the pop right back up. <clears throat> Now, according to the trading plan, uh, you know we are looking for the market to move to the downside. This is one of those trades where, uh, remember, it's an aggressive trade. If you missed it, you know, if, in other words, if you were not in on uh, the retest back to the upside, do not take the trade. Um, it simply has passed you by. Uh, looking at the British pound now. Hello. There we go. Here it comes. There we are. Remember, we were looking for uh, an aggressive entry at around 55.68. That was an aggressive buy. Remember, I, I was uh, counseling uh, a little bit of patience. Here is the stop. So if you did take the aggressive trade, and actually two in uh, aggressive trades, you were stopped out on both. Let me bring in a, a little bit of uh, a little bit more time. I, I want to um, I want to make sure we look at where the next level. Uh, remember, we were what we were saying yesterday was the next pool of buyers. If if the market does uh, move down, is going to be back at the prior lows. So here, whoops, there we go. 
here is the, the longer term. We've got uh, a support zone that's fairly big. Oops, come on box, there we go. The support zone, which is fairly big down here at the bottom, uh, I'll run it about like that. The reason why is I wanted to capture some of the uh, four hour lows in this region here, as well as, of course, the extreme lows uh, on the bottom. All right, so let me take those off. Actually, let me pause here. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, let me zoom in on just the, the last few days. Remember, this is the four hour bar. Pools of buyers that, that we talked about were here around 54.80. Whoops, again, give me the box. There we go. Uh, around 54.80. We could extend it all the way down to 54.20, um, but really the 54.80. Remember, I talked about uh, you know how long the market spends at a certain price, how many times it tests that price, all going into how reliable we deem the support area to be. Uh, if if price does wind up breaking through this 54.80 level, do not be surprised to see 54.20. And then finally, uh, the combo down here from about 5300 up to 5340. All of that pointing to uh, if you are an aggressive trader, there's no reason to put a big stop on this stuff because of these support levels being uh, fairly reachable by the market. So uh, here is the sneak attack uh, breaking through all of the buyers in here. The sneak attack, of course, being a very fast move, attempting to get the buyers out of the market. So while we still are waiting for the market to pop to the upside, at this stage of the game, if you are an aggressive trader and you're willing to continue going in the market, remember your money management. Remember, you've got to have a minimum of a two to one risk reward to take any of these trades in here.